Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to take a quick look at a simple, flexible algorithm for generating random dungeons. There are as many algorithms for generating dungeons as there are dungeons that can be generated by those algorithms. The one we're going to look at today will show you how to create rooms of varying sizes, keep them capped to the boundaries of the map, and dig tunnels from one room to another. And since the tunnels we'll dig don't take any other room or tunnel placement into account, it's possible that they'll overlap one another and, in so doing, make the maps look far from uniform. It'll give you a great jumping off point for creating your own or modifying what you've already got to add new features. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is decide how the data we generate is going to manipulate our game world. I'm keeping things simple here by using Godot's built-in tile map node, but you can just as easily use this algorithm with a grid mesh or other 3D environment. I've encapsulated my dungeon generator as an autoload object so that I can easily plug it into any project I want. The Godot project itself is pretty simple, with a root scene consisting of a tile map node and a button that generates a new map when pressed. Since the dungeon generator itself is an autoload, all we need to do is call its generate function and feed it a few parameters, including the tile map itself. When creating standalone plug and play objects like this, you really do want to keep the forward facing interface to a minimum when you can. Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at how we're going to generate our dungeon. We're going to tell the generator the dimensions of our map and tiles, and for this project I'm using a tile set whose tiles measure 64 pixels across, both horizontally and vertically. Since we're working purely in tile coordinates, we don't care about the actual pixel size of the tiles though, so once you have it set in your tile map, you can basically forget about it. We're also going to pass in the tile map node itself so that the generator can manipulate it, as well as define the minimum and maximum size of the rooms. I've made these values exportable so that you can fiddle with them without having to change the code. The first thing we do is define an enum to represent our tile contents. This code was originally written for Godot 3.x, which means that tile indices used to be a single integer ranging from 0 to whatever. But in 4.x, there are actually two-dimensional vectors representing the tile's coordinates in its tile sheet instead. We're going to compensate for that when we actually set the tile, since we have so few of them to deal with. Next, we define an inner room class. We do this because when we dig rooms, we're going to need to remember the specs of each room for various reasons. To that end, we keep track of the room's position, its width and height, and its central tile. We'll also need an array to keep track of our dug rooms, and a random number generator because, well, this is a random dungeon generator after all. Finally, we define variables to hold the map's width and height. Our node's ready function initializes the random number generator so that we don't get the same output every time, and then we define our method to actually generate the dungeon. How do we do that, though? Let's take a look at our algorithm. In order to generate a fresh dungeon, we need to complete three steps. We need to, one, fill the map with solid tiles, two, dig out a set number of rooms, and three, connect the center points of those rooms with tunnels. The first thing we do is fill the map with solid tiles. This is pretty straightforward. Just use a nested loop to count from the upper left boundary of the map coordinates to the bottom right. I actually extended the range of the map a bit so that there would always be a solid border around the edge of the dungeon, but this isn't necessary. Just be mindful of the coordinate boundaries you use to generate your rooms so that you don't accidentally dig your way into open space. As mentioned previously, we use the tile map's set cell method to set the cell of our map to the indicated tile. Since we only have two tiles, we can just plug our enum value into the vector object that indicates the tile's coordinate in our tile set. Next, we dig out the rooms. Presuming that every room is the biggest that it can be based on the settings we provided in both horizontal and vertical directions, the maximum number of rooms that we can fit into our map is equal to the dimensions of the map divided by the room's maximum size in that direction, multiplied by the same calculation in the other dimension. For example, if our map was 20 tiles wide and the maximum size of the rooms were 5 in both horizontal and vertical dimensions, then the most rooms we could fit into our map would be 16. Once we have this upper limit, we create a potential room position by instantiating a vector 2 with ranges in both directions consisting of 1 to the dimensions of the map less the maximum size of the room. We do this so that, as previously stated, when the room gets dug out, it won't break through the outer wall of the map since these positions represent the upper left corner of the room. Next, we create a string based on the contents of the vector and store it along with a newly created room object in a dictionary titled, appropriately enough, rooms. We only want one possible room at any given position, so we only add the room to the dictionary if the key for that position doesn't already exist. We then set the room's position to the original generated vector, its size equal to a random value between the minimum and maximum sizes, and then we calculate its centermost tile based on those values. Once all this is done, we can dig the room. The dig room method is super straightforward. Simply loop through a range of coordinates starting from the position of the room and extending to the room's dimensions minus one, since otherwise the value would be one too many. And I've encapsulated the actual setting of the tile into its own method because we're going to use the same logic when we dig the tunnels. After all the rooms have been dug, we want to connect them with tunnels. 
We're going to use a very simple across and down method of connecting rooms from center point to center point with absolutely zero logic to check if we're passing through another room or tunnel. This will allow us to create additional passages, crossroads, and all sorts of other random features in our map without any additional logic. The first thing we'll do is duplicate our room's dictionary into an array called Doug Rooms. We do this because we want to be able to remove rooms from that list as we connect them without destroying the original list of rooms, which we'd need if we wanted to further modify the map by adding entrances and exits or sprucing up the rooms with detailing, shadows, or the like. We loop through this array, making sure that we only loop to the second to last room in the array. We do this because we're going to look at the next element in the array beyond the current one to know where our ending room is, and if we look past the last element of the array, we'll get an out-of-bounds error. Next, we define the start and end of our tunnel by initializing those variables equal to vectors with the same coordinates as the center points of our current room, as well as the next room in the list, as previously mentioned. After that, we'll dig the tunnel first by traversing straight up or down from the y-coordinate of the starting position to the y-coordinate of the ending point. However, we have no way of knowing which direction to go in, so we check if the starting y-coordinate is less than the ending y-coordinate. If it is, we set a variable equal to 1, or negative 1 otherwise. We then loop through the y-coordinates from the start to the end, modifying the loop variable by the variable we just set. This way, the loop will increase or decrease correctly. Once we do that, we do the same in the x direction, essentially drawing a giant right-angled tunnel from one room to another. And that's it! See if you can extend this algorithm to create more detailed maps using larger tile maps or multiple layers. I'm currently using a more complex version of it in my roguelike, currently in development. Check it out! If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and or buy me a coffee at the link below. Tune in next time where we'll use this algorithm to generate a 3D map as seen in old-school dungeon crawler games like The Bard's Tale or Wizardry. See you there!